Okay, we're going to take a look at Faraday's ice pail experiment, which uh, essentially showed how charge was distributed on a conductor. And then we'll look at the Milken oil drop experiment, which uh, helped measure the elementary charge in the electron. And uh, of course, this is very important because it allowed us to, to see the quantized nature of charge in both the electron and the proton. Uh, first of all, Faraday's ice pail experiment. Uh, an ice pail was something that was more common uh, you know, many years back before refrigeration where they put ice in this metal pail. Uh, Faraday used uh, pewter for this experiment and uh, pewter was a nice conducting alloy. And what he noted is as he dropped a charged object into the pail or had the pail surround it, that he could actually uh, detect the charge building up on that. And what he used is what's known as an electroscope. Very simple device, uses the principle of light charges repelling. You had two uh, gold film, gold leaf pieces. As the charge would build up on the pail, it would be transferred to the electroscope, and the electroscope would be able to uh, qualitatively measure the charge on uh, whatever it was connected to. So basically in this experiment, um, we see a charged sphere or a charged probe here, positively charged. We lower it inside this pail and we note that the pail, even though it never comes in electric contact with the charge, uh, it develops a charge equal to the amount of charge on the probe. So the way that this works is really quite simple goes back to our principles about conducting materials. You can't have charge within the conducting materials itself. It has to sit on the outside. So as we pull our probe, which is positively charged, inside the pail, electrons are pulled to the surface of the conductor, creating a negative charge here. Well, once again, we have to observe the uh, rules that we had earlier on, that no charge can be left within the, the conductor and as a result, as the electrons go missing, we have an excess of positive charges and they must migrate to the outside of the pail. So again, this is very, very important to establishing uh, the idea of how uh, conductors work and how charge on conductors work. And again, as you put the positive charge inside, it attracts negative charges. And as a result, positive charges go to the outside. In fact, if you make connection, electrical connection, between the probe and the conductor, that charge will be uh, completely transferred to this. And this is actually, to the conductor, this is actually a very important principle behind the Van de Graaff generator, which we're going to talk about in, in a little bit. But um, again, you can see inside the conductor, you can't have any net charge. Once co connection is made there, electrical net connection is made there, all the charge goes to the outside of the conductor. Now the Millikan oil drop experiment, um, somewhat related to uh, what we've discussed here, but a little bit of a tangent. What it's really related to is that uh, concept earlier of the parallel plates. Remember we said that with the parallel plates, we can put a positive and negative charge in each plate. We get a fairly nice electric field. Uh, it's uniform in magnitude, it's uniform in direction. So in this experiment, uh, Millikan would use an atomizer, basically a perfume sprayer, to spray these oil droplets and they would, through friction, gain uh, electrical charge. You know, as we said before, you rub different objects together with different tribal electric constants. One is going to get a positive charge, one's going to get a negative charge. And that's actually the case of the droplets as they're being sprayed out here, they will gain a charge. Now, because the droplets are very small, some of the droplets will only get a single quantized charge. What Milken found out was the electric field needed to suspend these charged uh, droplets was um, quantized, that some droplets would need a very strong field to to uh, suspend them against the force of gravity. Some would need a weaker field, but the electric field would go in steps. The droplets were pretty much uniform 
in size. And from that, we could use their volume, the, the volume was four thirds power cubed, to calculate from the density of the oil, how much mass they have, you could calculate the known weight there and see how much the electric force would pull up. And again, um, although he didn't know it originally, what he was actually doing was isolating some drops with only one charge, with one elementary charge. And again, the maximum field needed to, to suspend these would be re related to the electric charge. So again, we see this droplet suspended, the force due to gravity is equal to mg. The mass, of course, is equal to uh, the density. This is the density, uh, mass density, times the volume. Thus, the force of gravity would be 4 thirds pi rho g r cubed. And then again, he could compare that to the electric force which would be Q times E. And for those droplets that only had a single charge, it would be the elementary charge times the electric field. And going all through this, he could come up with an expression for how much that elementary charge was equal to. Now today, we know the elementary charge is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. So this is an experimental uh, measurement of the elementary charge without actually having to isolate a single electron by itself, which would have been very difficult given the technology at the time. Finally, the Van de Graaff generator. This was developed by uh, Robert J. Van de Graaff in 1929. Um, it's actually a very important uh, item for uh, injecting ions into a particle accelerator. Uh, you've seen it in class where it's used to demonstrate this electrostatic uh, build up of charge, people's hair stands up as a result. But um, much larger units of these uh, have been used to, again, generate a very high voltage. You would use a high voltage to then accelerate a charge, and um, that would basically inject it into whatever particle accelerator that, that you had. Uh, GE built a, a, a massive uh, Van de Graaff generator um, you know, early on uh, when the first uh, particle accelerators were being developed. And in fact, the first particle accelerators were called Van de Graaff accelerators after the, uh, the use of, of this device. So in any case, they work by the triboelectric effect. Um, essentially, we take a very small amount of charge. I shouldn't say it worked by the triboelectric effect. They work by charging. Um, we send a very small amount of charge on this rubber band. And again, within a conductor, you can't have a, a net charge. All the charge goes to the outside. So this very small amount of charge that's picked up by the rubber band, goes within the dome, makes electrical contact with the dome, jumps off and goes to the outside. So it's like a very small pump. It slowly pumps charge up here until you get very, very large charges to the top. What starts out as a very, very small amount of transfer of charge results in a very large voltage. And again, that results in, you know, these uh, interesting effects that you can see. All right.